What raid composition and which classes should your guild be bringing to be able to clear heroic and normal Ice Crown Citadel on 25 man difficulty for your progression? Today I broke this down with my boy Jordy and if you don't know already, he has an amazing channel where he is doing all of the boss guides, which will absolutely help you clear this raid because it is by far the hardest raid we have ever experienced in classic World of Warcraft. We are gonna cover what tanks you should bring, what are the best tank compositions as well as what are good substitute. We're also gonna talk about how many healers you should bring and what are some of the strongest healer compositions, as well as at the end, we'll also talk about what your raid comp might wanna look like if you are trying to down heroic Lich King. Now, at the very beginning, we do a little speculation on the race to world first. So if you don't wanna see that, you can skip right past it. And lastly, of course, if your raid composition looks different than this, don't worry. This is a very solid and powerful raid comp, but you can clear through the entire raid with pretty much anything. Thing. Now, you can't really kill Heroic Lich King with pretty much anything just yet because we don't have the gear for that, but you don't necessarily need to force it. Anyways, let's dive right in. There's two different versions of the best comp for ICC. There's the version for every boss, and then there's the version for the Lich King, right? Yes, um, absolutely. And they're different. And one is easily attainable, and one is a flex. I think that the former, just the, the every boss comp, is probably the way to go because going for a Lich King kill week one is just not advisable. If you don't know that you're going to kill Lich King or you don't think you're going to get Lich King, you're probably not going to get Lich King. Yeah, if you're already not like pretty sure, you're just not going to. Yeah. It's, what was your guys' best percentage? Like 50. I think we could do it, but it's a roll of the dice. And I think that we might just end up splitting and going for week two. It's honestly a good choice. It, they we made just them harder. Didn't, we just didn't get enough. Yeah, I don't think it was that much harder. We just didn't get enough time on it. And we fucked around too much with like Syndragosa and stuff that shouldn't have mattered. Um, but, you know, it is what it is. We're, we'll survive. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I'm excited to watch you guys pump. Really fun. It's going to be so much fun. The race world first is going to be wild this time. Cause like, I hope that somebody one shots everything. Like I, I was surprised when beef bar one shot everything in old war, uh, in old war. Yeah. Like that was definitely a surprise. And then, so now I don't know if I can be surprised. Like I, I think that a one shot of everything might be, possible. I would say everything's a lot harder than it was in old war. I, I think even to, to one shot like not everything it's just lich king is like with our gear is a lot harder than algalon was yeah the lich king is really three fights right it's three five minute fights that that are all algalon-esque that you have to do back to back yeah so. all right so you guys i noticed are running a i would say a different tank composition than i think i'm gonna expect from most groups you guys were running no blood decay is that correct we ran a blood decay this the third uh ptr uh -huh. for lich king but i think a bear is just fine i think the i think the blood decay might edge out the bear a little bit but not by all that much um the I think Bear can absolutely tank Lich King. Were you guys, did your tank ever die? Oh, look at your face. Look at your face. Uh, uh, yes, absolutely the tank died, but it's still doable. Uh, yeah, but like, does it, do you think it like you needed perfect RNG or like, was there less like wiggle room? I'm just, um, I feel it. Yeah, the, the blood D, I mean, AMS is such a good cooldown, right? Like I, I, I'm with you, but the Bear can do it with the right externals and, but yes, ideally it's prop pal and blood decay. I, sure yes yeah I, I think most groups are gonna are gonna see the feral bear i think because they you have that more often for your guilds right like you already have a bear and you don't potentially have a blood decay early on in the phase i think blood decay is stronger as your second tank but i think you're gonna just like once you get all of the gear which is what's gonna happen before most guilds kill lich king your your feral is gonna be just fine anyways but the thing about blood decay the good thing about blood decay is it it brings double buff yes so you're but you, I mean, Feral is really nice as a tank too because there are probably some fights that you can one tank that bringing a Feral tank too means that you essentially only have one tank and when you need it, you have a fine second tank. So it's like... That's true. That's true. We have, uh, I think a Blood Decay can also tank all of the one tank fights or go like Frost or, or Unholy or the Blood Decay can tank them and like your, your prop pally can swap 
but like yeah you can have either right like ferals ferals is the easiest to swap to dps because like you can you have very very similar gear and you can change yeah. a few things you probably have the gear to to change it so for the layman's for the average player i would say yes you're running probably or for most guilds you're probably seeing prop pally and feral druid i think the early on best composition is prot and blood but it doesn't matter because relatively early on you can you can swap. I think there's a lot of flex in the healer position, and this is the thing that I know the least about. So what would you suggest are some of the strongest healer comps to fill out the group? Because that's something I, I honestly pay the least attention the, to. The core should be two Holy Paladins, a Disc Priest, and a Resto Shaman, and then that fifth slot can be a couple thing, or a few things. Mm -hmm. Um, You could do a Holy Priest, you could do a Resto Druid, or you could do a third Holy Paladin. I, any of those are fine. You don't. I don't think you want a second Disc Priest, even for Heroic Lich King. Um, I think that's a mistake. And you definitely don't want a second Resto Shaman, if you can help. Yeah, stacking Restos. Resto, giving your buff is amazing, but a second one doesn't really do much, right? Yeah. There's some fights that Resto Druid is super good for. Cindragosa, Resto Druid just feels really, really powerful. Yes, totally. Were you guys uh, seeing a five heals for most of the raid? Or are you bringing some flex classes that would be easy swaps to heal? We four healed Sourfang. You mo you just bring five healers and then you have people flex up or down depending. Like for, for Cindragosa, you seven heal. You could even eight heal because the RNG on the Unchained Magic is really shit. Eight healers. It's it's Did too you many. Say that? But but for, for your average guild, eight healers will be will be a good way to go um you don't actually bring eight healers you just have your shadow your balance flex you know what i mean even yeah. your rat like your your dps doesn't matter it's just keeping the rate up and the tank up in phase three so it's like that's true if you're trying to go for prog which most guilds are working on not you guys but most everybody like the more healers the better and if you're only bringing six and you have three people healing in phase three it's it, it's really hard to keep a tank up and the rate up, especially when people fuck up and blow up with Unchained Magic and stuff. So it's like... So what what do you think are the best flexes for that position? The Balanced Druid and the Holy and the Shadow Priest are all really good. And, and people they are going to be like, but my buffs or... and stuff. And none of that matters. Like, your buffs don't matter. Your DPS doesn't matter because you're sitting waiting for air phases anyways. So it's like, yeah, you're going to have a long phase three, but that's fine so long as you guys can get a safe set of blocks and just going back and forth yeah you go holy and resto don't go disc you never like a double disc uh honestly i i guess for syndragosa it wouldn't matter as much but holy's really nice on syndragosa because if you get on chain magic mm -hmm. and you got a soul stone you can run off to the side if shit's going south die have a full spirit of redemption pop back up and keep healing did so you it's like did you hear about some some strats where people were like, I think you can glyph Spirit of Redemption? Yeah, we were intentionally doing that in our second PTR, and I was on the plane, like, mauling at my people in Discord, being like, don't fucking just permanent, like, Permanently they were intentionally killing themselves. killing themselves. I was like, I was like, are you joking? They're like, it's working. I was like, please don't do this. <laughs> so and you can always Nexus, stay in. Nexus and I both found out later, and we're like, how dare you do that? We were so mad. Uh... But, but you know, it's, I mean, it, it it's probably viable. Like it yeah. probably is viable, but, it, but again, you have to think about it. If you're dead, then it just means that the next guy, like the ratio gets worse the next time. Cause it's always three healers are getting unchained magic. Right. So yep. it just means that the ratio gets worse the next time. Yeah. So it always feels, feels bad. So you would run seven, maybe eight, seven, maybe uh, seven, eight. seven's a good balance for, for Syndragosa. Yeah. I, th I think so too. And having your, your shadow and balance be able to swap is like very easy and your dps on this fight is like whatever um yep, yep all right if you're running a feral bear then i know you guys i think you ran a frost dk then so because you need to or are you running enhancement shaman where we you get your have haste a frost DK for most of it okay yeah i think that's uh anyone watching or, or thinking about it if you run blood dk you can run double buff and then you you probably won't run a frost dk but if you're if you're running a, a bear as your second tank you need that maybe your group's running an enhancement shaman but it's, it's not really ideal unfortunately yeah we're running an enhancement shaman just because we love our enhancement shaman but um we're talking to him about maybe swapping to like hunter or something hunter feels so good yeah i'm really excited about my hunter i'm only missing dv on it now so it's gonna pump oh you're gonna have so much fun hunter feels so good in this progression um 
I think your average raid probably brings two hunters. I'm not going to lie. I think you're going to see a double hunter at the start. And then eventually a few weeks in, you'll see like one of those hunters go marksman and one still say survival. Um, what do you, how do you I, feel about that? I, I think that we were at least at the top end of guilds, we were all pretty much running one hunter for mm -hmm. most everything. Um, but yeah, I think that two hunters probably sounds pretty good. We'll see how well they scale later into the phase. Yeah, because like I know I know that Marksman comes online really soon, but um, I don't know. I'm excited. I feel like our hunters did a really good job. They're also really good for Lich King, uh, for traps and jumping back onto the platform. So uh, they're good for you know uh, Blood Prince Council, and um, they're good for uh, Putricide for Green Ooze soaking stuff like that. So I don't know. They're they're just really good DPS and utility. Yes, I feel like they their overall damage was really good, but I guess that's not really going to be the concern for most groups that's only the people racing that that care about overall damage but the trap trap launcher quality of life for overall is so nice because you can just start bowling instantly instead of having to make sure you're inside of the group to drop the trap and then potentially even get out so you don't get melee aggro before yeah, you can they're, volley they're great for sour fang for slowing traps yes they're great for they're great for late death whisper for slowing traps they're just they're just a lot of utility um i think your average group brings two two hunters but um like the average guild it's just easy most i feel like most guilds have two hunters you get rep I, paladin I, one rep paladin necessary do you agree two rep paladins i think you probably run one early on and then you might run two if you have if you have some gamers like the Red Paladins are kind of like hunters. They have a lot of really good utility that enable you to do some crazy shit, you know? Yeah, I, I actually, I don't disagree. If you have Cranker Rets, one, if they get Tiny A-Bomb, which is like literally 1,200 DPS and just one item dropping, which is fucking crazy, right? You can get that early on. It just drops and you're just a pumper. Um, so that makes you really strong and then also their their two set makes them really really good throughout the raid i think you can run two but right away you'll start with one for sure yeah yeah can you put the survival in group three because my brain can't handle it okay do you want just one survival we can do one survival no do, do both it's good. it's good where do you where does your rec go so that your brain can handle it group one you're you put together groups so <laughs> there you go all right fine I feel like you put Frosty K in group one. I feel like I feel like group four usually is like where I have the, the balance and like warlocks. So yep, yep, yep. Okay, cool. Do you throw, put throw the balance in group four? Shadow can stay in three. All right, all right. Look at this. All right, we're 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 doing this so that someone's OCD works. I love it. Okay, mage. What I'm do you? Such a prissy bitch. <laughs> What do you bring on the realm of mage? I think you do two fire mages. They're they're very very good and will continue to get better. Two fire mages. Your guild loves mage and mage is very good. And I think this is a a good call early on. At least one fire mage, but probably two. I think if you're min maxing super hard at the very beginning, you might drop mages. But that's only a couple guilds. I don't and think that player. your average guilds. We're bringing one mage to Lich King. There is some weird evidence of mages getting back on the platform now, too, which makes them a little bit better than uh, we thought for Lich King. But mm -hmm. uh, we'll see if we can replicate it. There's there's going to be a criteria video on it. Oh, um, but I don't know, man. Mages are really good. They're just uh, outshined a little bit by the utility that warlocks bring um, early on. That's I think that's true. Warlocks are just very consistent. And the utility is very nice, especially for Lich King also. Um, yeah. They can just Lich King, teleport back onto. Um, Putricide, they're really, really good. Um, they just, Warlocks don't die, and Mages die. And so it's like, Warlocks have Death Quail, they have Shadow Ward, they have uh, Summoning Circle, they have, they just have so many ways to just not, I mean, the Soul Stones are super, super good for prog. Yeah. Um, they're just, they're just really, really yeah, I saw a, an OG comp that uh, someone made a while ago that had 27 Affliction Warlocks that killed Lich King, so that's Amex. Dude, the amount of grief that that image that you made, like, I had, like, 50 DMs about <laughs> Like, this. is this real? I, I was so mad. I was like, do you honestly think that he would bring two enhancement? That doesn't make any fucking sense. And they were like, but maybe this and that. And I was like, oh, <laughs> so I'm so sorry for anyone that believed that one. I don't know. 
why so I thought mad. it would be funny. I just it was funny, but it was uh, just like it was the worst. Hey, uh, God. So, anyways, warlocks because they're so Chad. You obviously need one demonology warlock in this like balance composition that we're kind of doing for your average guild gear. I think you'd still bring two to three affliction warlocks. I, you can make an argument for three, but then someone might make an argument for an Ellie shaman. So at least two affliction warlocks are going to be in in your most group comps. What do you what do you feel? Yeah, we don't run an Ellie. But you run an enhance. We do run an enhance. We don't enhance has been good up till now. And enhance will still be good for prog, I think. Uh week one or two, but I think that they probably fall off pretty quick. Why doesn't your frosty K go on holy if you run an enhance? Uh we were not running an enhance for Lich King. Oh, okay. And, um, so does he just swap yeah. before that, or he saves Frost the whole time? He he swapped Unholy for Lich King. Okay. Yeah. All right, so you guys, there, we have that. You need at least one combat rogue. That's your 4% physical damage. Um, do yeah. you think that most groups should run four Warlocks, or do you think, what would you fill in this last caster group here, if it's even um, a caster? I I think you bring a fourth warlock, but if you don't have it, bring an Ellie. Like, just do aft slash Ellie, I guess, for that last slot. It's like... I wish I could do half and half. Uh, Question. Now, we don't have a Fury Warrior. We don't have an Arms Warrior. We don't have Unholy DKs. We don't have Feral Kitties. What would you think your, your most groups are going to be doing here? That is a solid raid comp for your average guild. I think if you're going for a average guild comp, you run one Unholy DK... One Feral Druid, one Fury Warrior, and then another Combat Rogue or whatever you have. Um, ideally, an Unholy DK, I guess. But this is this is a oh, little goodness. bit of everything. This is this is like uh, this is like a balanced. I think this is yeah a very very balanced comp. I think in most groups, like you can decide if you swap the the second Feral, if you swap the second Affliction or the second Fire. All of those can be another thing if you have it. Is Feral the best class? Is it the best class yet? Maybe. Ferals are very strong. So this is what you're seeing from most groups, right? If we were to look at this from like a more min, a very min maxi perspective, maybe maybe min maxi specifically pertaining to Lich King, if you wanted to like try to optimize killing Lich King, the swaps from this comp just to kill Lich King, I would literally go like this, this, and uh, you can go another Warlock or something. And you probably could kill Lich King with that. Probably. You could definitely, yeah, you could kill Lich King if people play uh, correctly. I mean, it, uh, you know, pull out a major two, slam another warlock or an unholy pull out. You know, there's a ton of things you could do. Like the the goal is to do the bare minimum comp to support the warlocks and the unholy decays. That's all you're there to do is like whatever needs to survive in a comp to buff the warlocks and unholy decays, and you can kill the lich king. So it's like, yeah, that's like those are the those are the strongest classes for lich king and progression for anyone really is going to be like if you that what you have right there is almost exactly what our lich king kill comp um yeah we swap the rest of druid for the holy priest but like that's it rest of druid get out that's i mean that's a solid composition right there right and and i think we i think we're going to see a lot of guilds that because lich king is so hard making swaps is like potentially necessary but eventually you're just going to have so much gear right the difference is right now like some of the checks on lich king are really really rough whereas it won't be that way with like gear right you'll just be literally hard cranking